Hey honey, welcome to my channel Design by Ida. My name is Teresa, I'm a professional fashion designer. And today I want to teach you everything you need to know in order to design a ski jacket. And ski jacket um, can mean so much. Some people will just put on an insulated jacket and say, I'm ready to go skiing. But some people require so much from their ski jackets. And, um, you know, you want the ski jacket to protect you from the weather. You want it to be functional. You know, you want to be able to move around in it. And you want it to have pockets for everything you need. And so much is going into designing a ski jacket. So today I'm going to take you through all of it so that you can design amazing ski jackets. And if you're applying for a job to design for a sportswear company, then you can walk in there with confidence and say that you know what to do. Okay, because I'm going to teach you what to do. All right, so let's start. As always, um, as a fashion designer, you need to pay attention to the target price, the customers, the market, the brand you're designing for, because price is going to impact all your decisions going forward. So if you're designing for a high-end brand, um, and you're designing top of the line, the best ski jackets out there, then you can choose the best fabric with like very high abrasion strength, very durable, very lightweight, um, top level waterproofness and breathability. And you can like just choose the best and you can choose the best waterproof zippers and you can add as many pockets as you want and you can do like laser cut features and you can do all these things. But if you're designing a ski jacket for a low price brand, then you need to be very smart about the choices you make because you need to choose a fabric that will be good enough, strong enough, protect against the weather and not be expensive. So you will probably not choose waterproof zippers. You will probably choose regular zippers like um, this lawn or nylon zippers and then have like a placket over them to protect from the water and the snow. So there's a lot to think about and let's get started. So when I choose a fabric, I will meet with the fabric suppliers and I will go through hundreds of swatches and I would, I will um, touch them and see if they feel good. And I will see if they look, have the look that I want. I will stretch them. Is the fabric um, four way stretch? Is it two way stretch? What that means is, you know, um, some fabrics, they have only um, two-way stretch. So meaning when, they, when you pull the fabric to the sides like this, it will stretch. But when you pull it up and down, it will not stretch. So for the best motion fit garments, you want four-way stretch. You want the, the fabric to move with you. So you're not restrained in your movement. So you can just move freely and just be an amazing skier, right? So four-way stretch is the best, but sometimes you will opt for two-way stretch because it's lower price or it has a different quality that you like about it or something. So the first thing you do is you choose a fabric that you like. It has, um, it's maybe, if you want like a lightweight garment, you will choose a lightweight fabric. And then um, after you have chosen a fabric, you will discuss with the fabric suppliers what kind of coating you want on it. So normally you would want a DWR coating on the face side of the fabric. So that's like the top side, that's the, the outside of the fabric. You would want a DWR um, finish on it. What that means is a durable water repellent finish. So they put a coating on the fabric so that when the water and the snow hits the fabric, it will just roll off like droplets. So um, it will just keep the fabric dry and you will just always see the water coming off, just rolling off, right? This is something that's going to wear off over time because it's on, it's on the outside of the fabric and the more you wear and the more you, you know, wear your backpacks and, you know, you rub against the fabric or you wash the fabric, um, it's going to come off. But then the wearer can use DWR products like washing or spray to um, add a finish back on to the fabric. So that's on the outside of the fabric. So whatever fabric you choose, you can add this to it. The fabric supplier will fix this for you. And the membrane um, on the back side of the fabric, 
is what determines how breathable the fabric is and how waterproof it is. That's where the magic is and also where the money is. So if you're designing a high-end, amazing, top-of-the-line ski jacket, you can go for a membrane that has like three, like the 30,000 breathable, um, 40,000 waterproof. Like it's top of the line. It is so waterproof during high pressure, heavy rain, heavy snow, blizzards, whatever. It will just keep you dry. And also it will let all the sweat vapor come out. So it will just keep you dry from both sides, right? So um, membranes like this, it's like a thin film and it keeps water droplets out because those molecules are too big, but it lets vapor from like sweat and moisture inside the jacket come out because those molecules are small enough to go through the film. Does that make sense? That was really difficult to explain, but I hope you kind of understand. So when you choose your fabric, you can add a DWR to the outside of the fabric to keep the water out. And also you can put a coating, a membrane on the inside of the jacket to um, define the waterproofness and the breathability of the jacket. And this is durable. This is not something that the wearer will do something about. This stays on forever, hopefully. Um, and then the next thing you need to decide is if you're making a really top of the line waterproof jacket, and you choose the best membrane, the best fabric, the best everything, then all the other choices you make after that have to um, match up with that requirement. That means all the seams need to be taped, all the seams, because when you sew through a fabric, you make small holes with a needle, and if you don't tape the seam, water will come through those holes and into your jacket and it will not be waterproof. And then it's really a waste of money to have an expensive, amazing fabric if you have a lot of holes in it, right? So you want to tape all the seams and seal them so no water can come through the seams. So that's the one thing. Another thing is things like zippers. You can use waterproof zippers or you can use regular zippers like Vislon or nylon and have a placket over them to protect from the weather. None of them are completely waterproof. They're just not. No matter how much the zipper supplier tells you they're so waterproof, they're never completely waterproof. After a long time of wearing and opening and closing, the waterproof zippers, they're not so perfectly sealed anymore and water can come in but it's a better protection than using a regular zipper and then having an amazing waterproof fabric. So what else can you do? You can add inner plackets. So for the front zipper, you can have a outer placket to cover the zipper and you can also have an inner placket. That means double protection. So if the water sneaks in through the side of the front placket, you still have an inner placket uh, where the water will just hit that inner placket and just run down so you can keep dry on the inside, okay? Um, so that's about the weather and the waterproofness. So what else do you need to do? Well, you need to have a hood big enough to fit over a helmet. And you definitely want to have like a very high neck. So if you look at um, good ski jackets, they will usually have like a pretty big hood, but and then like a small opening. So the, the collar of the hood will be all the way up to here so you just see the eyes with the goggles, right? And that's just to protect you from wind and snow. So if you're skiing downhill and you have like a lot of snow and wind coming towards your face, you will be protected. You will be warm and cozy inside the hood. Um, also, you want adjustments on the hood. So you can have a halo draw. It's a drawstring, an elastic drawstring that goes around the hood like this. And you have an adjustment at the back with a stopper here. Um, and also you want something to close it in around the face. So when you put it on, the hood might be kind of big, you know, but you want to have the ability to close it really, really tight around your face to keep the weather out, keep you nice and dry. Um, so you have elastic drawstrings on each side that you can pull. And the best thing to do is to have drawstrings that you can pull with one hand. 
because if you have to use two hands to adjust it and it's like windy and stormy and snowing outside and you have to take off your gloves and hold on with one hand and pull with the other, it's just a hassle and you do not want that. You want to make it really, really easy and practical for the wearer. So one hand drawstrings adjustments are the best for sure. And then um, for the visor, the top of the hood, you can laminate it and, you know, almost like a cap, you know, that you wear in the summertime or all year round for many people. Um, you want it to be like hard enough to stay in place and to keep that shape. So even when you cinch in the hood to make it fit it around the face, this will still keep the shape and keep um, the weather from hitting you in the face and also give you good visibility. Because if the hood is just like this, it's just going to be difficult for you to see anything. And you need to be able to see where you're skiing. Otherwise, accidents will happen. Okay? And speaking of accidents, I'm just going to put in um, a little tip here. Um, have you seen those like Reco chips that you can embed in your jackets? Those are really, really great. But they're expensive. So if you're designing a cheap ski jacket for a low price brand, you will probably not use this. But if you're designing top of the line ski wear, you will want to add this to your jackets. And the Reco chip will make you searchable for rescue professionals worldwide. So if you get caught in an avalanche or if you go off the trail and into the woods and you're just lost, people can search you and find you and rescue you. So it's a really good safety element to add to your jacket if your price allows for it, okay? And then you want pockets. So for a ski jacket, there are so many things you can add. Some people will just have five pockets, three pockets, whatever, and then they're fine with it. But there is a lot you can do to it and you can add to it to make your ski jacket more professional, more um, targeted, more practical for the wearer. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Okay, so for, um, for the front of the jacket, you will want to have one or two chest pockets. This will allow easy access for your money, your phone, whatever you need, or snacks, chapstick. Um, so chest pockets are really, really great to have. Then you will want hand warmer pockets. In the hand warmer pockets, you can add little things. So maybe in the night, so maybe in the left pocket, you will have a goggle wipe and in the right pocket, you will have a keychain clip. So you can hook your um, house keys and your car keys to the clip and not be afraid that whenever you open the zipper, the keys are going to fall out into the snow and you're not going to be able to get home, right? So it's just like added safety things, small things that don't really add a lot to the price, but it it's very nice for the wearer to have these things. And then for the inside of the jacket, a lot of ski jackets have a couple of like really big pockets on the inside, one for goggles and one for gloves. And that's really, really great to have because you, when you're like walking to the ski lift or to the cafe or wherever, you're most likely carrying your skis or your snowboard or something. And you just want like all your things to be on you so you don't have to wear, you don't have to carry everything, right? Because your hands are busy carrying the skis or the snowboard. So if you can have pockets and like a place to put everything else, that's the best. So a great thing, a great feature for many ski jackets is that they have a media pocket on the inside. Now, some people have it on the inside of the jacket, so we'll open the front zipper and then you will access it. And some people will have an access to it from your outside chest pocket. You will be able to access the media pocket on the inside. So what a media pocket is, is just a secure place for you to put your phone or your MP3 player. And it has a small hole for you to put your earphone plug through. So you can listen to music and keep your phone on the inside of the jacket, warm, cozy, safe, and um, enjoy your ride, okay? So what else do you need? Well, for your arms, um, I mentioned before something about motion fits. 
So for a ski jacket, you want to be able to move. You're going to be skiing, right? So you want, um, you want enough room between your shoulders across your upper back. So you want to be able to, you know, ski and move and stretch and be comfortable and not have a very fitted jacket that's going to be, it's going to restrain your motions, right? So you want enough room across the upper back so you can ski, okay? Also, for the arms, you can make your arms fitted so that they have um, better movement and so that they don't, when you're skiing, you don't want the whole sleeve to like pull up and like be very bulky up here. So if your arm is more fitted with and tailored around your elbow, it will just uh, allow you to move better and it will just stay in place and have a better fit. So that's good. I always have like two or four darts around the armhole to give it a better shape. And then for the wrist, you want to have, well, okay, I know this is a big discussion <laughs> amongst many people. Some people love the wrist gaiters and some people hate them. I love them sometimes and I hate them sometimes, so I'm not sure. But the wrist gaiter is basically a thin elastic fabric that stays close to your wrist and it usually has a thumb hole, so you put your hole, your thumb through and then it stays in place and keeps you dry so you can put your glove or your mitten over it and it will keep snow and water from coming into your sleeve. So it's a really great feature and most people like it, but some people find it annoying and they just don't like them. And you can just, I, I know some people even cut them off. So some people really don't like them, but most people like them and appreciate them and it will keep you dry and warm. Okay, so that's a feature. Also, you want to have a Velcro adjustable cuff for your sleeves and you want it to be big enough and easy enough to pull even when wearing mittens or gloves. So you don't want like a tiny little thing. So you have to pull off your mittens in order to adjust it. You want to be able to pull it off and adjust it easily with one hand without taking your mittens off. Okay. What else do you need? You need air vents. Um, good ski jackets have zipper openings with mesh lining so that you can open them up and let the steam out when you have been very active because when you're going uphill and you're sitting in the ski lift you want to close everything up because you're kind of cold right because you're sitting still but when you're going downhill and you're moving fast you get so warm and you need to let all the steam all the vapor out so what a lot of um, companies do is that they add an air zip um, under the arm now again price points come in here because you can have a one-way zipper meaning it goes from the top to the bottom and back up again you know or you can have a two-way zipper so you can open it a little bit here and a little bit here or you can open it from the center and go this way and this way you know two-way zippers are more expensive than one-way zippers so that's something you need to think about also you need to think about if it's going to be a waterproof zipper or if it's going to have a placket over it to keep it to keep you dry so and also please remember to have the mesh lining inside um, because it will keep snow from falling into your jackets when you open up to let the steam out, okay? Another thing to consider is the mesh lining. Uh, it can sometimes get caught in the zipper and be really, really annoying. So whenever you open up, if the mesh lining comes out or gets stuck in the zipper, it's just going to frustrate your customer. So what you can do is you can take a piece of fabric or um, woven tape or something and stitch it across um, the mesh lining to keep it in place so it doesn't come out and get caught in the zipper. So that's just something to make that a little bit easier and so yeah. Okay, what else? You want to stay warm and comfortable and dry when you're skiing, right? So do you want to have like a really cold zipper on your chin? Nah. You want to have a chin protector. What that means is you can have either like a small placket on the top of the zipper to um, usually aligned with fleece or trico or something to keep your chin nice and soft and to protect it from the zipper. And sometimes you just have like a long inner placket that just bends 
over the top of the zipper a little bit to keep you um, soft and warm and dry and protected from the zipper, okay? And then you want to have a powder skirt on the inside of the jacket. Most ski jackets have a detachable powder skirt, so that means you can take it off if you don't want to have it there, or you can just um, leave it on. It's usually attached with a zipper or something, so you can take it off. Um, the powder skirt is there to, um, it's like an elastic um, inner piece of the jacket that you that you really close with um, snap buttons. The powder skirt is really great because it keeps the snow out. So if you're skiing and you fall and you're like rolling around in the snow, you don't want the snow to come in under your jacket and make you wet and cold, right? So that's why you have the powder skirt. It will keep you dry. It will keep the snow out. And a lot of powder skirts also have like a snap function or a button or something. So you can attach it to your ski pants to really seal everything off and keep you dry. Okay. So powder skirts are great and you can make it detachable. So the wearer can take it off if they don't want it anymore. Okay. You want elastic drawstrings at the bottom of the jacket as well. You want to be able to um, pull the jacket in tighter if you want to, or just leave it the way it is. This is really, really great because people are different sizes and different shapes. And even like a size medium can look very different on very many people. Some are like wider and more narrow or longer, shorter, whatever, right? So you want to allow for some flexibility in the width of the jacket. And having, having an elastic drawstring on the sides at the bottom of the jacket allows for people who are very narrow to like cinch in the jacket more and people who are wider to just leave it the way it is. So you have a, a wider range of fits options, flexibility, okay? So that's really great to have. On the arm, some people have it on the upper arm, some people have it on the lower arm, but somewhere on your left arm, you want to have a pocket for your ski pass. That's really, really great because so many ski resorts have an RF reader. And then, so when you're going to the lift, you can just lean in and it will scan your pass, even though it's inside your your pocket and you can just go to the lift. Some brands make this pocket see-through like with like clear plastic and some people just have like a normal zipper opening pocket right there and that works just fine. So and it makes it so much easier because you don't want to have to like take off your mittens and gloves and pull out your ski pass to enter the lift every time. If you can just have it in your arm and not have to open up any pockets, so much easier, so much better. So please remember to add a pocket on the sleeve. So there you have it. That's all you have to remember to design a ski jacket. I hope, I think. I really hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, you can comment below. Okay, so in order for you to remember all of this when you're designing a ski jacket, I have made a PDF for you. It's like a checklist that you can go through when you're designing a ski jacket. So it's just to um, help you to remember everything and to make a decision on everything. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, share it with your friends and subscribe because I post new tutorials every single week and I will design with you and I will share my fashion secrets with you. So all you have to do is subscribe and stay tuned and wait for more of this. So thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.